All right, the Volkswagen's back. This is the uh, what is it, 2012 CC Sport. It's got the misfire going on with it, and it's always cylinder three. I know I swapped these coils here, and I got a question mark on that one, but that was on cylinder three. It was misfiring. I'll explain this later. <laughs> so, uh, give me a second. We're gonna look at the codes and. Uh, it's got my basic stuff here, and it's uh, P0303. Yowza! All right. So today uh, we're finally going to go ahead and pull the intake down, clean the valves. Let's see if I can get this light on. All right. Um, so, like I was saying, the car's here. It's finally going to get some get uh, valve cleaning, and um, cylinder three is always the culprit with having issues. Um, like I said, I'm going to sit there and justify putting the breather on here and the hotter plugs. Now, this is like seven months ago. I mean, the car has been here, I was want to say about, oh gosh, like four or five times, but I just never documented it only because we, what we'll do, we'll patch it up, you know, basically putting plugs in there and uh, she'll be on her way. Sometimes it'll last a lot longer than others, but, well, you know, once I put a fresh set of plug, once I put a plug that's brand new in there it'll last a while so um, where do I start but now it's here because you know it's misfiring as you heard initially at the beginning of the video and we're going to go ahead and get this addressed finally pull this intake off see what it looks like I'm not going to go through the repair procedure we're just going to observe the valve um, of see what it looks like on the inside of here and you know um, hopefully it's, it's, it's got a lot of carbon build up in there we're just going to go ahead and decarbonize it clean everything and um, install everything in reverse order and see what happens but mainly we just want I just want to look at it so just this, this is that future documentation of what's going on with it I know I put brake cleaner in the intake here to try to clean the intake you know I don't, I don't expect that to work I don't that's just mechanic in a can and I, I, it don't work I'm not a big fan of that rather just clean it off uh, by hand, the old manual labor, and I uh, get everything back in there and see what happens. Uh, because this, this, since this direct injection, this does have a notorious issue with carboning uh, build up on the valves here. Now on this one, the turbo is bad. I'm gonna be straight up with you. When I pulled the charge pipe down, in one instance where I had to go ahead and clean everything and put new plugs in here, it had oil in some of the um, lower valleys of the charge system. Uh, especially when I had did the rear main seal, this is that car where I did the uh, front crank. I said rear main, the front crank seal. This is that car where I did that front crank seal. That's still fine. That's not leaking because um, that was something about like the PTFE type seal or some shit like that. That works. I digress. So um, I know I received a lot of flack about the video putting hotter plugs in here, but you know people don't. You know if if you if you dislike if you're looking at the video you dislike it. Put a comment down here. You know, I don't bite. And plus, the internet, <laughs> this is the internet. Everybody's a troll in a way, right? Depending on where you go. But I like the criticism. Just tell me why I'm wrong. I don't mind it. I'll leave your comment up there. I'm not like some of the other YouTubers that are erase your comment. Put it in there. Let's see it. But I'm going to sit there and justify why I put hotter plugs in there. Um, because I know the chemical put the little treatment wasn't going to work worth the damn. Uh, why I put this breather on here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and then tear into it, and we'll look at the valves and do a before and after. I'm really considering doing a compression test uh, for before and after, and um, I'll just document the numbers, and then we'll just go through a cutaway of um, showing how things. Did I say cutaway? We'll just fast forward, show you what things will look like, and. We'll do an after comparison. So it might, hopefully I can keep this below 30 minutes. But I'm going to spend a couple minutes talking about why I'd put the hotter plugs in there, why this is on there, and um, then we'll then I'll shut up. But basically, um, uh, we did. I have replaced this uh, PCV system. I know it has a specific name. I can't remember. I don't like Volkswagens. But this basically is a check valve inside of here. So under um, the normal PCV system under vacuum, it'll pull a vacuum here into the intake since it's in vacuum mode. And this connects here. I just block this tube off here. 
So it will normally pull vacuum, it would accumulate oil, but you have to take into consideration the turbo's bad. So it's going to consume oil. You got to take into consideration the valves suck because of direct injection. It's going to hold on to that oil, burn up, and then it's going to cake up. So simply, I just put a breather here. So in the vacuum, it's not sucking in all that oil, and being that the turbo is questionable, uh, that needs to be replaced, it's not going to um, have any additional oil consumption, and it's going to overload the uh, valves. So it's not going to cause an excessive buildup on the valves to where you're going to get caked on there, so it's less likely to create a, um, a hesitant condition and especially foul those plugs out because it's only but so much oil a spark plug can uh, burn off and that leads me to the spark plugs let me go back um, so I did replace this PCV system this is new uh, oh I put that on there a while ago and e now despite me putting this breather on here to eliminate the oil consumption this on, this didn't cause any check engine lights. It did cause a little slight, mm, like a slight uh, sluggish start off from the standstill. However, it didn't create any lights and it still worked completely normal. So once this check valve here gets into boost, what happens, the, it's a diverter valve in here that goes into the vacuum source, which is the intake tube, to where it pushes that pressure off into the intake. So it's not in the charge system where it's pressurized, it, it diverts that from the place where it normally has vacuum and goes all into the vacuum source here. So when this pressurized on the boost, this closes off and diverts that PCV crank pressure into the intake of the turbo. Now, um, I put hotter plugs in there simply because uh, if you know how cooler plugs work, uh, the cooler plugs don't hold as much heat. Being that this car is turbocharged, they from the factory you're going to have cooler plugs in there. Typically two steps cooler than a normal factory plug. Um, so they don't hold as much heat, so it's less likely to create premature detonation. Now, I put hotter plugs in here uh, simply because this lady don't drive her car hard. This is just a normal driving vehicle. And if you have a turbo car, normal under normal driving circumstances, where you're not dogging it and getting into it and you know trying to take advantage of that turbo charge to get up to speed, everything will work out fine. You're not going to have any problems. But the problem come into play like on extremely hot days, and I'm talking about 110 degree weather days, you know, that may become a problem. But this is North Carolina. We ain't got like those type of over, we ain't got those type of days, you know. So, and for the most part, this car runs rich. The compression's low. We aren't going to have, we're not going to have crazy issues like that with the hotter, with the hotter plug in here. And being that, if you still follow me, being that the compression is low, you have misfires with lower compression, you're going to have um, issues with that plug igniting. So the hotter plug on top of the uh, on top of the low compression, on top of the oil, hopefully it'll help produce a hotter spark, which will help with the efficiency with. Um, with those plugs in there over the factory cooling plugs. So hopefully you follow me so far. The plugs that are hotter are likely going to be they're going to be self-cleaning in comparison to the cooler plug that can't tolerate um, a lot of stressful uh, environment. Stress meaning um, the oil contaminants that come in contact with that electrode. It can't combust it that well because the cooler temperatures isn't going to burn off those uh, oil particulates. So that's why I put the hotter plug in there um, to self-clean and this is why I put the PCV system, I changed I changed that so it wouldn't consume as much oil uh, to, to, to overwhelm the plug and it would help clean itself and keep you know good good temperatures in there. 
So with compression comes heat. Um, and this car is not making that much compression. It especially been it has misfires and a uh, valve carbon buildup issue. So just put in, you know, if you have any questions, go into the comment section. And I'll explain further, but hopefully I pretty much explain why I did this. Because like I said, I re received a little flack on some of the other videos without, um, without, I guess I, I didn't get any really no verbal scrutiny. Um, but I understand the internet uh, minions out there. I guess those are people that seek solace on the internet, uh, the group think persons that just basically do what I say. I, I call it a verbal kick in the nuts. You know, I would appreciate that more so than just, you know, just the, just the dislike, you know, tell me why I like it. But, you know, there's, there's, there's reason to why I do everything. Uh, like I said, those, those hotter plugs are going to work a lot better than those colder plugs and it lasts or this long. Sometimes they were longer than others. And uh, once it comes here, I'll put new plugs in there. Oh, for the cylinder that's misfiring. So the main cylinder we're going to look at is cylinder three here. Hopefully that should be the one that's that's the worst of the four. But we're going to clean all of them and uh, take a look at what's going on inside the uh, intake manifold here and the valves. So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to go ahead and get everything pulled off. And I'll be back with uh, a visual of everything on the inside here. And I'll go from there. I got the plugs out. We're gonna take a look at one. Uh oh, what I do? Oh, one is already out. Here's number one. This is what we got. And um, I did put some uh, auto lights. Just some regular coppers in there, but they do burn a little bit. They do burn better. Uh, you can see. That soot buildup, uh, that soot buildup is oil accumulation pre-combustion chamber. So there's a difference with the oil when it's in the combustion chamber, like um, the valve seals or piston rings. You're going to get like a uh, more of a fouled look, from what I understand. Let me see if I get no metal on this car. Uh, we got two. So here's two. Same thing, we have uh, there's a white soot build up on there, and it's between the ground and the electrode there, which will cause the plug to ultimately lose its ability to fire. Here's three, this is the one that always had the most problem. Now, I did this, uh, I did close that gap of the plug up, that was me. I can just need to focus. I did close that gap up extremely close uh, with the hotter plug. And yes, these are mismatch. So this is black and it's filed. You can see all the oil uh, build up in there. And I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me uh, if this cylinder probably had valve issues. I don't know, but that cylinder three. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. God damn it. That cylinder three is in direct proximity of the PCV system. So you see why I put that valve there, that uh, breather. Let's see. So here's four. Four is always looking real good. It, looked, oh, it usually looks the best out of all of them, and it does. I want to add this lady did get a, a cylinder head replaced on here and I'm hoping that uh, it's nothing wrong with his head. But we have that. Um, 
So now I'm going to go ahead and continue to pull everything out and I'll work on getting the, the, the valves exposed so I can clean those out. All right, I got the intake off and I got these little slots here pulled out. There's little trays here. Now, uh, they don't look that bad. And again, the lady had her cylinder head replaced a while ago. But shockingly, I don't know if you can get a good look in there. Four is actually the worser out the four. So four looks the worst. Three, which commonly filed plugs, look the best. And two and one just looks... And they look, they look okay, and they're not the worst. I'm still going to clean all of them anyway, but three from when I would clean the intake uh, valves with the brake cleaner had some effect because that is the better looking one. And I would imagine being that the oil would, from the PCV system would directly go into cylinder three, that would be the worst. But when I did use the brake cleaner treatment, that brake cleaner went into that cylinder first. So the brake cleaner actually had some significance or some impact from what it seems in comparison to all the other uh, three valves here. So it, it threw me, it, I'm kind of thrown for a loop right now and I'm wondering if there's, it. I'm, I'm thinking that this, the turbo is just going to simply have to be replaced. Uh, simply because, I mean, we're still getting all this oil in there. The charge pipe, here's the charge pipe here. And you can see all that oil that's at the, well, you're not going to be able to see all of it at the bottom. But there is oil that is traveling up the charge system here. And I wouldn't have known regardless of, I wouldn't have known how the valves look unless I took the intake off. Or, you know, so, I mean, I'm going to clean these valves and, um, Get everything put back with some fresh plugs in here and i'm just gonna have to lo let her know we're gonna have to replace that turbo so i'm gonna do a good job clean these valves um and we'll take a look at the aftermath not the, well not the bad part of it but we'll take take a look at uh the end result here uh when i get done and uh get everything bolted back up so i'm gonna clean the intake valves and i'm gonna clean the intake there get all the oil out as much as i possibly humanly can um, I don't have a, a sandblaster or anything. I mean, they don't look that bad like they need to be. Uh, so I'm just going to simply uh, take a wire brush and brake cleaner, put a little tub in there, and just go to work on cleaning all that uh, carbon buildup out of them. Brake cleaner works extremely well. I mean, gosh, it, it's a good degreaser, put it that way. So I'm going to use that, get everything cleaned up. We'll be back, see what happens. Everything was going totally well with getting the valves clean. This is what I got so far on the cylinder four, cylinder three, little focus on in there, cylinder three, two, and one. Uh, problem, oh, shoot. Uh, problem came into play when I was turning the motor over. I noticed one of the valves wasn't opening and closing like it's supposed to on cylinder three. So let me show you. Let's see if I can jump this. So yeah, that's that's what I noticed, and I just like you know what, fuck it. Um, I'm not sure how long it's been doing this on cylinder three, uh, but wow, uh, I'm gonna have to let her know. I gotta pull the pull the valve cover off, and it's gonna be needing a lot more work than what was initially projected um damn it <laughs> my feelings are hurt 
And, you know, I, I think it's kind of besides the fact also that I, I left the oil filter out and I was spinning the motor over and I made a mess of the oil. So I got everything kind of pretty much sitting in a royal purple trying to get the grease. But, again, that's the least of my worries. I'm like, you know what? I didn't even, I really wasn't even phased by that shit. It was like, hold on. Something ain't right. <laughs> and this is the case here. So that would explain um, cylinder three common fouls uh, if... But, you know, if I put fluid in there, it holds the fluid. Um, strangely, it just, it is, is, uh, is, it can't be a leaking valve, but I, then again, I don't know um, until I pull the valve cover off. But this job has got a lot more extensive than what it was originally here for. But it ran, you know, it ran when you, when I pulled it in here. Um, I guess a little bit of more backstory with this vehicle. I mean, she did have the head job done on this vehicle before a while ago. So, uh, yeah, I mean, but, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm kind of at a loss of words, but you know, she drove the car normal. I'm pretty sure putting a plug in here would have allowed her to work. I mean, a car can work off of one valve, but um, as to why that valve isn't opening and closing, uh, we don't know yet, but once we pull that valve cover off, we're going to look at the rocker arms or the follower or however this system operates and pretty much go from there. Alright, I got the valve cover off, and this is what we got. I mean, I'm, let me just put it this way. Volkswagen is stupid, okay? I think they got a bunch of child molesters working there or something because, I mean, why would they put the guide for the timing component, the timing chain right there with the valve cover which makes you have to take the uh, timing cover off or get it extremely loose to get the valve cover off. It's like stupid man, like why would they do that? But let me show you what I found. Um, I, asked, I talked to the customer and what happened uh, uh, years ago, They had, she had a dealership do the cylinder head but it's, I think this is a common problem. So here's the cylinder um, the three here look at the cam follower look at that it's gone and it's sitting right here alright there we go so this is what happened the follower broke off and there's some metal somewhere somewhere in here Uh, where that is, I don't, I don't know, and I'm pretty sure it's probably sitting somewhere in this, in this valley, but this is, this is what we're going to have to replace, and I'm, I don't, ain't no telling how long it's been running in that fashion, uh, but, uh, this job just got expensive, <laughs> and I think I can get these from the parts store. I remember looking at a guy on um, YouTube a long time ago, and look at because I look at other mechanic videos, and he was replacing one of these out of his Volkswagen. It's one of them popular guys. I can't remember, uh, but they go through the experience. I don't, so I don't have to. So let me see what I can find. But um, I guess a valve cleaning job turn. Uh, really quick into into uh, more extensive job. Damn, I hate Volkswagens. I really do. And I know I'm going to have to take all this stuff all the way off when I put all this stuff back. I was hoping I didn't have to do that. Oh, gosh. I'm, now I really don't want to have to take that cover off. I think I'm... I don't know, man. I swear, I hate Volkswagen. But anyway, man, we'll, we'll see what happens. So today is the next day. I got the... I had to go to Advanced Auto to get the rocker arm uh, ordered. And I called this morning, so it should be here by now. But I'm also replacing this vacuum pump uh, gasket there. Because when I pulled the valve cover off, I'm pretty sure I distorted it. And I don't feel comfortable putting it back. Because lightly, just my luck is going to leak. So this is the... I don't know why I kept saying the uh, cam follower was broken 
but this is the cam follower or either the lifter here that I pulled out the motor uh, that seems to be fine I depressurized it and pulled another one out that's accessible and uh, that was working depressurized and it, it felt the same they all feel they all it, it feels normal it doesn't feel damaged and normally when the lifter goes out anyway it's just in, incapable of holding pressure so it was just solid I was thinking maybe it got I don't know it was stupid uh, but I thought it got too hard or whatever and damaged the uh, rocker arm but uh, it, was, it was a stupid logic but um, likely to mean this just broke because of a weak defective part uh, so this retaining clip for the rocker arm it sits in there like that and the retainer is supposed to go oh shoot yeah, I got it clean back up. I swear, boy, it's like one of them days you just want to stay asleep. But you know, anyway, I got um. So likely, what happened? <laughs> God damn it, man! All right, I dropped this like twice, and is it has got a bath of brake clean twice. So hopefully, it shouldn't fall anymore. But likely, uh, like I said, what happened? I mean, it just broke. It's just the defective part and. You know, so I we got a new one in. I do have a new uh, lifter coming in, so I'm not sure. I, I don't think I need to replace this. I'm just going to leave this alone as it is. And my biggest concern was this clip actually that came that uh, sits on top of the lifter here. So um, I don't think it's going to come with it. I don't know. I may just replace replace them both we'll see uh, as far as getting the cam cover cleaned up I mean, it's quite a bit of work and hopefully I got it cleaned okay I'm dropping other things hope I got it cleaned thoroughly now all these grooves that you see requires a special sealant it's not the same as a RTV it is this um, anaerobic sealant and what it yeah, unlike RTV, this sealant will cure once it has no oxygen. So I guess it, it will cure from the inside out if it doesn't have any oxygen. Um, if it doesn't sense that, I guess. I mean, I, I'm not sure the chemical makeup that makes this do what it do. But uh, Permatex RTV sealant will dry once it's exposed to air. And this is the complete uh, antithesis. So this will dry once it's not exposed to air. Kind of remind me of Loctite in a way, but I think Loctite still works with um, with oxygen. I can't remember. Now, like I say, once you clean all the clean these channels out of the valve cover, you'll see these little lines in here. I got all of those cleaned out. I took a pick, and it was just pretty much as a, you're gonna make a mess just getting inside those grooves and cleaning all that out. And it's the same with the uh, cylinder head there. I try my best to keep it clean as possible, but this sealant is it's okay for it to mix with the oil, from what I understand. There was very little information about it. I found one guy that was on YouTube, um, and he gave uh, he had a Volvo that head he was doing, and he provided some really good information on it. Um, um, so, yeah, I digress, but... I'm not going to talk about his his uh, issue, but his was definitely unique in comparison to what I got. I didn't expect that I was going to have to use this. Now, this was $16 at Advanced Auto, and I know it's not the right one that goes for this particular vehicle, but I am not paying $160 for sealant to go on this car from Volkswagen. And uh, so you can kiss my ass. <laughs> um, and I'm looking at it, and I guess if I had to be provide an analogy, I mean, I've rebuilt motors with gray glue and instead of on a Honda engine and not use Honda bond but that's not I know this is not a Honda but the uh, point still stands you know there's aftermarket parts or uh, resources for a reason so you don't have to spend that money to go to the dealer and uh, to achieve the same end goal so everything's clean um, now I seem like I got plenty of room to remove the rocker arm there uh, the cam is sitting up a little bit 
uh, so it elevated the tensioners on the other side of this so if you're facing the timing chain the tensioner is going to be on the left side from what I understand so hopefully I have enough slack in here to be able to put the valve cover back on and it drive that camshaft back down and keep everything um, pretty reasonably tensioned I'm hoping worst case scenario if it's like crazy tight I'm just gonna have to go in take the tensioner out and reinstall the uh, the uh, main tension the main uh, timing tensioner so hopefully it can retension itself um because I'm not sure if it has like one of those locks that keeps it fixed in a fixed position as the age progresses with the chain so it can only go out or extend and not um, and um, not depressurize so I, I, I'm not sure this is a Volkswagen I'm not a big fan of it so I'm uh, in the midst of trying to get the sealing off of the tube seals where they uh, with the spark plug tube seals oh gosh So I'm in the process of getting the sealing off the spark plug tube seals here and you can kind of get an idea of how much of a mess this can be. Um, this is not the pick I use but I had a flatter pick and you would just pretty much make a mess. So what I'm about to do, I got a shot vac and I'm just going to take a shot vac, turn it on and as I pick and break up the sealant Hopefully the shop vac is able to pick up those little particulates there and sweep it in. And I ain't got to worry about a lot getting to the motor. So, but what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to leave the old oil in there, drive it around, and hopefully, you know, this is the best decision I could make right now. Um, let whatever debris is in there hopefully get broken up and circulate it into the old oil filter. And then I'll just rechange the oil with the new oil and filter hopefully it'll work out that way we'll see what happens but um i mean that's the best decision i got as far as trying to keep keep the engine clean as possible i mean it's going to be if that stuff is designed to get into the motor but it's supposed to at a liquid state then i can't imagine that little debris uh actually causing harm um once uh once broken off and like in this case I'm cleaning everything off and it, and it actually get into the motor or the uh, oil channels so we'll see what happens and um, I'm gonna wait till I get my part and then we'll install it and I'm gonna get everything bolted back up and cross my fingers <laughs> so I hope everything work out just fine but this is uh, quite lengthy uh, if you looking for labor time to do this valve cover it's allegedly 2.2 hours uh, to do a valve cover on here uh, the labor to replace the cam the, uh, the rocker arm is supposed to be seven hours so you were supposed to take down the timing but once I since that uh, intake cam doesn't have a uh, anything on the other uh, on the opposite end just that, that vacuum pump there on the exhaust side then I mean this is pretty much you know how I'm gonna have to install the valve cover so hopefully this is normal and hopefully me installing the valve cover with the cam sticking up like that is normal I mean because we're because if, if you're doing the uh, timing chain you have to put the timing chain on the cam is going to stick up a little bit because it has a guide here on the top that's integrated in the valve cover or cam cover and it sits down and keep that the top chain from jumping off everywhere so hopefully hopefully that's what's needed I remember I did do the cam uh, the crank the front crank seal on here and I mean I did have to remove the harmonic balance I didn't put a special tool in there so um, I don't know if that I don't I know it moved ever so slightly but me putting everything back, I don't know if it, like I said, if that tensioner extends out and then you can, 
Um, once you tighten it up, it'll it'll bleed itself off and relieve itself of pressure. So I'm not sure if that tension is pressurized and it locks as it as it increases in uh, distance. So we'll see. But this is not that fun of a job. <laughs> Trust me, this is not that fun. Uh, but I've been using a T30 Torx bit. And I think it's like a T25, I want to say. It was another one here. But this is, trust me, this is not quite a faint-hearted. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things work out. Alright, I got back. I got the, oh shit, screwing up life. I got the rocker arm. This is the part number of the rocker arm. If it's, It was a very long number. This is a customer number, rocker arm, location. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of these numbers. It was a very long number. It wasn't something simplistic. Like if I had to go like the doorman part, I replaced it with like 911-303 or some shit like that. It wasn't, it was a very lengthy number, but I did have to go to Advanced Auto and get it. And um, this is the box and this is the brand name. So anyway, so remember here's the old one. And here is the new one here. And we got our follower. So I'm simply just going to remove this. And uh, install it on my other one. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this follower or the lifter in there first. And then I'll put this rocker arm in there. Because it looks like it will be a little easier sliding it in there. So it does come with the clip also that I just removed, so it should just slide right on there. Now you're gonna have to um, ignore that dirt there because it was pretty difficult to keep everything clean. I'm just gonna simply push down on it, just like that. So I do have some assembly lubes on the uh, cam journals. Uh, the surface is prepped. And I'm going to go ahead and put on the anaerobic sealant. Now, it says on its per directions, I was supposed to use some surface prep, but it said solvent at the end here. Um, what did it say? Permatex surface prep uh, activator to be surface only. Allowed to, okay, so. It doesn't specify on here. What happened, I had Googled it and to see if it was necessary, but it's, it said uh, in the description that was a little bit more detailed that it was a solvent and it could be used for other purposes. And a solvent is a cleaning agent, and I got plenty of brake blah, 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 cleaner, and the surface is prepped. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the crevices with this anaerobic sealant and um, get everything put back into place so I'm gonna hit it again with some brake cleaner and then uh, I'm gonna get everything uh, buttoned back up After all, this is a machine surface.
replacing this this pump gasket in the back, so I'm not worried about damaging that because I didn't I didn't take that uh, I didn't take that out for a reason. I didn't want it. I didn't want to get this. violating all the rules and I'm reusing bolts My dumb ass. Hopefully, it's not all the way in there. <clears throat> okay, so I got lucky. <laughs> Man, oh, that would have been a bad day. So I didn't want to take this back out. Cam cap is in there. Just got back from the parts store, uh, Advanced Auto Parts, and I went and got the new gasket here, and uh, it was pretty reasonable. It was about $7 or so. This goes to the vacuum pump at the far end there that I broke or damaged when I pulled the uh, pump out, so I'm going to slide that right back in there. Uh, so here's the factory one here. It is extremely thin in comparison to the newer gasket. Um, I don't think this is a revised design. I think this is just the aftermarket OEM quality. Uh, metal shim, well, metal uh, MLS gasket, multi-layer steel gasket, and it is definitely like three times the thickness of a factory gasket. But I'm pretty sure it's going to work fine. Not sure if it's going to in inhibit any of the performance. I can't see why. I just need a damn thing to seal. Uh, and looking at the gasket here. I cannot remember the name of this stuff to save my freaking life, man. What is this? Um, it's not RTV. Oh, gosh. Anaerobic. I can't remember anaerobic to save my life. And I, like, said it a total of 30 times a day. I can't remember it. But this anaerobic gasket maker is living up to its name. It's not even dry yet, and it's been sitting for an hour. So I'm pretty sure it dries from the inside out yeah, once it doesn't have its oxygen as stated per um, I don't know, instructions. Uh, all right, let's get this gasket on. I'm in the midst of getting the vacuum pump back in slash high pressure pump. Oh gosh, I'm screwing up. I tell you, this car is just, it's annoying. I'm just, I'm over it. You don't understand, I'm just tired of it. If it ain't one thing, it's another. So I got my roller here and I did inspect this and you know what I didn't do? Uh, okay, cause I was like, damn it, this is not a perfect cylinder. Uh, but it does have a notch here to where it goes in one way. So it's fine, it rolls okay. I'm simply gonna put my high pressure pump roller back in place it just slid right out freely when I pulled the uh, housing apart so I imagine it'll go back in just as easy 
just like that. Use my high pressure pump and the fasteners. Only credit I will give Volkswagen is that they kept it kind of simple with having to only use. Uh, shoot, did I put? Oh shoot. Yeah. Okay, hold on. They kept it kind of simple when using uh, this torque bits. Uh, I'm, I still don't like it though. You know, it should have been a Honda. If it was a Honda and it had bolts. You know, like 10 millimeters, hell, even 8 millimeter fasteners. I would have been like okay with it, but it doesn't. <sighs> My hair's in the way. Um, finish this up tomorrow. I'm 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 over it. Just don't understand. I've been running back and forth to the parts store, uh, getting supplies, and uh, as much as I want to know if this rotates and runs fine, uh, I I do believe you know what we could do. Start it up and see if our lifter's working appropriately. Or well, rotate it because I can jump the starter, but I need to put an oil filter back in there before I make another mess. I'm gonna put an oil filter, old oil filter back in there. Alright, now remember, this was the valve that wasn't working, this was the side that was working, so this is the one, uh, focus, you sucker, this is the one that was bad. So I'm going to jump the starter, and we're going to observe and see what happens, if we got any clunks, if we got any dings, and if this valve is working appropriately. So This is only going to be half the battle. Got movement which is great now does it work <laughs> when I start it up man oh, God. so it seemed like we we're in pretty decent shape that is working but this is still only half the battle because uh, now I gotta get the, in get the intake back on and make sure that the combustion um, is that load from the combustion chamber is capable of keeping everything intact I'm going to be straight up. I didn't use a torque wrench. I tried to, but I couldn't really get down to a, a 9 newton meter and do a quarter turn. And some of those bolts, uh, those fasteners, I didn't feel comfortable torquing them uh, beyond what I felt comfortable. But uh, in most cases, um, from just redoing motors and stuff and just experience, um, I'm sure I'm fine with that. I, I snugged them all down, and even though some of them felt like they were stretching and I did not buy any new ones uh, we'll see what happens how they work out most cases I mean these are pretty heavy bolts feel like grade 8 fasteners we'll see what happens I'm pretty sure that's not the material I don't like Volkswagen I don't know I'm sure I'll be perfectly fine reusing those fasteners for the, um, for the to retain the uh, cylinder valve cover the uh, cam cover here so uh, I'm not worried about that, but go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am not that guy who uses a torque wrench on every single thing on here. I made a conscious effort to, however, I did not get to doing that. So um, this is just for those people who, you know, decide to have that moment where you're like, you know what, do I need a torque wrench? I'm doing this um, not by the book. I am looking at the book, the information, but what I don't have, I'm not using. Yes, this is a customer car. However, you know, this is my job, and I'm owning up, owning responsibility for what I'm doing if something don't happen. But I'm also exercising common sense here. So, enough of the disclaimer. I'm gonna let that uh, anaerobic. I said it on my own this time without looking. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna let that anaerobic sealant cure. I'm going to um, come back to this tomorrow and um, 
probably finished cleaning the intake, which is fine. Just got the oil out. We're going to have to replace this turbo on here, no doubt about it. But I'm just going to make this in two parts because I know I'm probably pushing 40 minutes, 45 minutes with this video. And, um, I, you know, I get long-winded. I will, man, I will talk. Seriously. So, I'm going to be back tomorrow. And just look out for the second part of the video. So, see you on the next one.